we head into 2024, the smartphone chip war is just heating up. Qualcomm took the tech world by storm by announcing the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, its latest flagship. But how does it compare to the A17 Pro, which currently holds the crown for the most powerful smartphone chip out there? Should Apple be worried? Let's find out. But first, if you're new to the channel and excited to see this clash of titans, then smash that like button and hit subscribe. Starting with the CPU on the two chips, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is based on TSMC's 4 nanometer process and has an 8 core design with a single prime core clocked at 3.3 gigahertz, three cores clocked at 3.2 gigahertz, two cores clocked at 3 gigahertz, and two cores clocked at 2.3 gigahertz. Qualcomm claims the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is 30% faster and 20% more efficient than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. On the other hand, the Apple A17 Pro is built on TSMC's 3 nanometer process, allowing Apple to pack more than 19 billion transistors on a single die. The A17 Pro has a 6-core CPU with two high-performance cores clocked at 3.78 GHz and 4x high-efficiency cores clocked at 2.11 GHz. In a leaked Geekbench 6 listing of the upcoming Xiaomi 14, which is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, it scores 2207 in the single-core test and 7494 in the multi-core test. In comparison, the A17 Pro scores 2897 in single-threaded tasks and 7261 in multi-threaded tasks. For the first time, Qualcomm has managed to outrank Apple in the multi-core CPU test. In the Antutu benchmark, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 has scored a whopping 2,139,281 points, while the A17 Pro managed to score just 1,628,672 points. Moving on to the graphics department, Qualcomm claims the latest Adreno 750 GPU on the 8 Gen 3 is 25% more powerful and 25% more efficient than last year's 8 Gen 2 chipset. In the 3D Mark Wildlife test, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3's new Adreno GPU scores 5,338 points with 32 FPS, whereas the A17 Pro scores 4,075 points with 24.4 FPS. In the 3D Mark Solar Bay test, which tests ray tracing capability, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 again takes the lead with a score of 8,547 points and 32 FPS. In contrast, the A17 Pro scores 6,594 points with 25.1 FPS. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 now supports Unreal Engine 5 Lumen systems with global illumination. Additionally, the Adreno 750 supports hardware accelerated ray tracing and has introduced a new Adreno Frame Motion Engine called AFME 2.0 to upscale 60 FPS graphics to 120 FPS in real time. Along with that, it brings support for a 240Hz display for 240FPS gaming on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. The A17 Pro, on the other hand, is based on the new shader architecture. Apple has also brought hardware accelerated ray tracing support to make gameplay console level. You can play AAA games like Resident Evil Village, Death Stranding, Assassin's Creed Mirage, etc. on the latest iPhone 15 Pro models. Similar to Snapdragon's AFME, Apple has brought Metal FX upscaling to boost the frame rate on the A17 Pro. That said, many tests point out that the A17 Pro's GPU falls short in terms of efficiency. According to GeekerWan, the A17 Pro's GPU peaks at 10.9 watts, whereas Adreno GPU scores higher at just 8.2 watts. Now, let's compare the AI capabilities of the two chips. Qualcomm has built a new Hexagon AI engine that is 98% faster and 40% more efficient than previous generation NPU. The company claims its new AI engine can run AI models locally and generate up to 20 tokens per second. Additionally, the new Hexagon NPU can run 3 billion to 13 billion AI models on the device and deliver a private and personalized experience. Qualcomm has partnered with Meta to use its Llama 2 model commercially on its 8 Gen 3 powered devices. Apart from that, you can run other AI models optimized for the Snapdragon platform. In terms of image synthesis, 
The Hexagon AI coprocessor can generate images in less than one second. Qualcomm says its NPU can also process multimodal data using the CPU, GPU, NPU, Fast Memory, and Qualcomm Sensing Hub to offer a personalized AI experience. Meanwhile, Apple has also taken big strides with the A17 Pro in the AI and ML department. Its 16-core neural engine offers two times better performance than the previous generation AI engine. It can effectively perform 35 trillion operations per second. The tops figure for the 8 Gen 3 is unknown at the moment, but the Hexagon AI engine on the Snapdragon X Elite, Qualcomm's latest chip designed for PCs, can perform 45 tops. In terms of image signal processing, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 has cognitive ISP, which can perform real-time semantic segmentation up to 12 layers. It can isolate the subjects of various scenes from the image and apply accurate colors to match the scene. Other than that, it can remove objects from captured videos, expand captured photos using AI, boost the brightness and clarity in dark videos using night vision AI, and much more. Along with that, you get simultaneous front and back camera support to record your vlogging experience. Qualcomm has also brought Dolby HDR Photo Capture, which has over 1 billion shades of color in comparison to JPEG's 16.7 shades. On the other hand, the A17 Pro can shoot 4K 60fps ProRes video, Pro Raw images, and even spatial videos, which can be viewed on the Apple Vision Pro. It has a capable ISP that works in tandem with the Photonic Engine to offer sharp and accurate images. On the connectivity side of things, Qualcomm is using its in-house Snapdragon X75 5G modem in the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. It delivers peak download speeds of up to 10 gigabytes per second and upload speeds of up to 3.5 gigabytes per second. For local connectivity, it's equipped with Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, and LE. The A17 Pro uses Qualcomm's X75 5G modem. However, it's a discrete modem, whereas the 8 Gen 3 has an integrated modem in place. Along with that, you will get Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3 support. Now comes the big question. Did Qualcomm finally beat Apple in the chip race? Well, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 has received significant upgrades in all aspects. While it can't beat the A17 Pro in single-threaded performance, it has breached Apple's fortress in multi-core tasks. But if you're considering jumping ship from iPhone to Android or vice versa, you'll be happy to know that both chips are truly high-end pieces of silicon. Ultimately, the choice is yours. Let us know in the comments what you think about Qualcomm's latest flagship. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.